Have you ever rewatched a favorite movie or reread a favorite book, wishing that this time it would end differently? That you could intervene in the character's choices? So, full disclosure, I've watched Titanic seven times in cinemas, and I don't know how many times since then. And still, every single time I watch it, I think, maybe this time they'll see it before it's too late. <laughs> Maybe this time, they'll both fit on that stupid floating door. <laughs> But of course, that never happens. It always ends the same way. She always lets go. Wouldn't it be great if we could choose a different ending? If we could get do-overs for some of our own decisions, or when tackling some of our toughest problems, or even the world's toughest problems, if we could actually feel the consequences that some of our decisions have so that we choose differently next time? Would it help us if we could vividly imagine that new reality and if we had people all around us who could help make those new, better decisions stick? Well, games can do that. Games are different from any other medium. Games are not passive. They give us agency, the power of choice. We don't sit back, we participate. So when I'm building a village in the game The Wandering Village, I choose which resources to use, and I also decide whose needs come first. Is it my villagers or maybe the giant companion that we happen to be traveling on? And that agency, it leads to greater empathy, the ability to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. And so if I told you now that you could speed up the growth of your crops in that village, but the only way to do it was by drilling a hole into the back of that creature to get out of fertilizer, would you do it? And sometimes that empathy comes from unexpected places. Monument Valley 2 created a whole chapter called The Lost Forest to try to teach their players to empathize with the hidden lives of trees. And games also give us the freedom to fail to imagine different and better futures. Terranil is a great example of a game that imagines what could be. As I come across this barren wasteland, I can learn how to regenerate it. I can find the right balance. I can imagine how to strike the right balance so that life can thrive. So we have agency, empathy, and imagination. And this is the space that I play in. I work with studios and industry to use games for social impact. I try to help them see what I hope that you will all see, that games can do so much more than entertain, that games can be used for good. And I've been in this industry for more than a decade, but the way I got my start in this industry was as a community manager. I was the bridge between players and makers. This is me as the nature ancient fae in the game Rival Kingdoms, where I used to be a community manager. And that brings me to the fourth reason that games are like no other medium, and that is community. So it was more than a decade ago, but the memory is still fresh. It was 11 p.m., I had just come home, and within a few minutes, I was in full pilot gear, jumping off of and over corrugated iron into a giant mechanical robot to fight another giant mechanical robot. So I was new at it and not very good. And even though we were in the middle of a tenuous battle, I could hear my friends and co-pilots laughing at me. And it made me laugh too. And like any big problem, it can be scary to face it alone. And also, it's just way more fun to try to face it together. And that was the first time I really got it, what makes this medium so special because these experiences that we have and these obstacles that we try to overcome, the problems that we try to solve, the adventures that we go on, we don't go alone. And if you're someone like me who embodies different cultures, ethnicities, and languages and has moved around a lot, then it can be hard to figure out where you belong. But that night when I was conquering new worlds, albeit badly, winning or losing, with my friends, that was belonging. So we have agency, empathy, imagination, and community. And this community, it's three billion strong. Just so we're all on the same page, gaming has become the biggest entertainment industry of our time. It's bigger than music and movies combined. Last year, the revenue from games worldwide was estimated at more than $300 billion. And I talked about Titanic in the, be in the beginning, and that is the fourth highest grossing film of all time. It brought in about $2.2 billion in the last 30 years. 
But if we take game Fortnite, that blockbuster, well, that brought in about three times that amount just last year alone. Yes, I know. <laughs> So there are more than 3 billion gamers on the planet, and that's more people than drink coffee. And just so you know, all of these people here, they are all gamers, but actually, there's not coffee inside every one of those coffee cups. So just to prove my point here, you know, super rigorous study. But if you don't game, then your niche. And still you might wonder, why would one want to focus on make-believe when the real world is quite literally on fire? But what keeps me in this industry are thoughts like this. Imagine if you had the undivided attention of every single one of those three billion people. What would you want them to know? What would you teach them? Because players are giving us the most valuable things that any of us have to give, and that's not money. It's their trust and their time. And I believe if we respect our players, their trust, and their time, then we can change the world for the better together. There is power in make-believe. Researchers at McMaster University have found that games have cognitive, social, emotional, and motivational benefits. They reinforce that try, try, and try again mindset. And a lot's been written about how games can help us practice our emotions in safe spaces so that they can translate into the real world. And game designer and researcher game Jane McGonigal, who is a pioneer in this space, she talks a lot about the unique quality of games to be able to train our imaginations, to sculpt a mindset of future power. And there's that word mindset again, because it's exactly these qualities, this mindset, that we need to adopt to be able to face our current and future environmental challenges. We need to feel empowered to make different and better choices. We need to empathize with people in different parts of the world who we may have never met. We need to imagine new futures, and we need to build communities all around us who can help us live out that new and better reality. So in my experience, games don't separate us from the real world. They actually can help us become better citizens of it. In 2019, 17,000 Pokemon Go players collected 145 tons of real trash in 41 countries for a beach cleanup. And London-based studio Us Do Games planted a million trees with their player community. And every single game, whether niche or made for the masses, can reach and teach their players. And I've seen this work and get better year on year in something called the Green Game Jam that we started at the outset of the pandemic. We gather studios, and many of the ones that I've mentioned today, and we give them the space to try to tweak and innovate on their existing games with massive audiences. And this year alone, we've managed to reach more than 85 million players and raise more than half a million dollars for real conservation organizations doing real work on the ground. Over here, you have somebody from Organization Rewild working with a harlequin toad. Isn't he just the cutest? The toad, I mean, the toad, the toad's really cute. <laughs> And here's that toad in the game Love and Pies. These games have found ways to nudge their millions of players about things like renewable energy and wildlife conservation and climate activism. But what about those three billion players? What do they say? What do they want? Do they care? Well, we've yet to ask three billion, but we did manage to ask 300,000. And there's a caveat here to say this was not a traditional academic study, but rather a first step in trying to lay the groundwork for more rigorous research into this space. So through the jam and some of the studios, we asked players about their attitudes towards the environment. And more than 50% of players say that climate change is already affecting them now. Another 26% said it will affect them at some point in their lifetime. And nearly 80% of players said that gaming can help you learn about the environment. So to me, this means that games are a really engaging and compelling way to rally people around these topics. And here's the kicker. We ran surveys before and after the content went live, and we found that these numbers rose in post, so after people played the content. 
And not only that, but people were also more likely to commit to a pro-environmental action, like eating less meat or planting trees, after they played the content. So to me, in the community that I work with, this signals that at the beginning of games as a viable vehicle for pro-environmental action on a massive scale. And what I'm most excited about is the potential of a game that combines the unmatched reach of this medium with the superpowers of what games do best. And you know what? I don't think we're that far off. This is The World Reborn. It's the first activism adventure game coming from Oregon-based studio Wicked Saints. In it, players practice becoming a hero, and then they uh, learn behaviors like how to deal with bullying and prejudice, and yes, also environmental challenges like climate change. And then they unlock missions to transfer that behavior into real life. Who says you can't have fun solving the world's problems? We've been given at least four superpowers to try, of agency, of empathy, of imagination, and of community. So, if you make games and you haven't considered how you might use this medium for good, maybe now is a good time to try. And if you make games and you're doing everything I've already talked about, then amazing, share it so that others can follow your example. And if you play games, ask the studios who make them to do more. And if you don't play games, well, then I've just given you a few reasons to start. <laughs> There is an unrivaled power in this medium of make-believe. How are we going to use it? It's not too late for us to choose. Thank you. <laughs>